easiest DIY project ever. Here's a light bulb. The source of the light is the bulb shooting out, and as it gets further and wider, the light disperses. The brightest point from the center hits a subject or screen with the most intensity, creating a hot spot. You can diffuse the light, which makes it less harsh, and spreads the light more evenly, resulting in smoother distribution of the light. But you'll still get uneven lighting and fall off, and a hot spot, just not as much. This is not a bad thing, and in fact, this creates depth, moods, and everything else you see when lighting a scene. But there are cases when you don't want that. If you try and do green screen work, hot spots and uneven lighting are the enemy. That's one reason why bank lights, also known as light banks or simply banks, are used by the pro when doing screen work. A bank light is an array of lights that form a single light source. Bank lights have long strips of light that have minimal fall off and generate minimal hot spots. You'll see why you need these in my next episode, but just trust me when I say you'll want a minimum of two four foot or longer bank lights with four lights in each. Cool, let's go buy some bank lights. Here's some film gear bank lights that are almost $3,000. Maybe we can do better than that. Here's some KinoFlow bank lights that cost a bit over $1,000. Should be obvious that these are pro lights used on a pro set, either supplied by a lighting crew already owned or rented. They're pro gear, they take abuse and they have a lot of goodies. But for those of you without an unlimited budget, you need a better option. Now you may be thinking, hey, those look like fluorescent shop lights. Pretty much. But fluorescent lights have problems. One, they flicker like a mofo on camera, even though you can't see it with your naked eye. Two, you have to hardwire them yourself to an electrical source. Three, fluorescent bulbs emit terrible light, again, not seen with the naked eye. Four, you need to be able to mount these so they're usable. And that's where this DIY bank light comes in. It's an ultra simple four light, four foot long bank light, mounts on a light stand, can be built in about five minutes, only with a screwdriver, and it costs about 70 bucks. Problem one, flickering. The electricity that flows into fluorescent light varies, which makes them flicker only seen on camera. To solve that, these fluorescent lights have an electronic ballast. The ballast is a fancy name for a thing that regulates the current of the lamps so they don't flicker. Problem two, hardwiring them yourself. Not a big deal for those that are electrically savvy, but these lights have a three-pronged grounded plug, so you just plug them in and turn them on. Problem three, terrible light. Shop lights rarely come with bulbs, which in our case is a good thing. You can go out and buy any old fluorescent lights and slap them into this fixture. What you'll end up doing is chasing your tail, trying to figure out what's wrong with your shot, when in fact it's because you bought the wrong lights. I shoot here with lighting that's about 5,000K, so I wanna match that so I'm not fighting with mismatched lights. I also want quality light. You'll see this as a CRI value known as Color Rendering Index. I won't get into the details, but anything rated at 90 plus will be legit. One solution is to buy these pro bulbs, 38 bucks a piece. I need four, that's 150 bucks, twice the amount of building two of these lights. Instead, I got these Sylvania 5000K CR90 plus 48 inch long lights. They come in a two pack for nine bucks. Problem four, mounting. Pretty simple, this bracket is perfect at about three bucks and I can attach it to the light and drop it on a light stand. Let's cost this out. Shop light with electronic ballast at 50 bucks, four bulbs at $18, a mounting bracket for $3, total cost is $71. The cool part is all I need is five minutes and a screwdriver. Let's take a look. Pull the light out of the box and lay it down. See this? That's the electronic ballast. Turn it over and you'll see a screw here on the back that keeps the ballast secure. Remove the screw, place the bracket over the hole, replace the screw. Light stand mounting done. If you don't have this on your light, just drill a hole about a foot down from one side and attach the bracket with a screw and nut. Next, turn the light over, tuck all these wires in and screw the wire housing to the light housing. Now screw the ends of the light holder to the housing. Do the same for the other side. Now place your four lights in the light holder. Plug it in and turn it on. Now repeat for the second light or as many as you are making. Finally, hang the bank light on a light stand like this. Done. Okay, let's be honest here. These are ultra cheap solutions. They don't have barn doors, aren't black, have no diffuser covers, no dimmers, and just hang on the light stands. Well, get creative. Get some plastic sheet metal, cut it to size, and get some pop rivets and some hinges and you'll have barn doors. Add rubber grommets or whatever to the lights to make them stable on the stands. Add some dimmers. They should work with the electronic ballast. 
Paint them black if you like. Rig some sort of diffuser on them. Just get creative. Now you may be asking, why didn't I do this? Because in my next episode, I wanted to show you it isn't necessary. What's important is that you now have four foot of even lighting, doesn't create hot spots, and didn't cost you thousands of dollars. Would I use them on a real setter commercial? No, as I already have or would rent the equipment needed. Could I use these on a real setter commercial? Yes, and I did once just to prove they would work. If you got the money, go get yourself a bunch of real bank lights. If not, try out these low cost DIY bank lights and let me know what you think. All the materials and links are in the description below. I hope that helps and thanks for watching. DIY episode? Oh, shh. Don't do that.